Two Rock, Two Seeds of Evil is a game I remember so passionately. I've spoken about it so many times. I'm going to share the experience with you. We are going to play it together for the first time since the original release from Nintendo 64. Man, I'm excited. Let's get to the video. Oh my goodness, here we are. Two Rock 2. Uh, it's happening. Now, I have maxed out the graphic settings. There seems to have been some extra, you know, quality of life settings as well. So, visually, this is going to look a little bit better than what the original Nintendo 64 version did. Like you can see in the loft, uh, at the left, you can see that reflection in the water. <laughs> that definitely was not on the Nintendo 64, right? Especially that distortion. But the moving noise water on the top, that shimmering, that was absolutely there. And um, the reason why I'm going to do this playthrough with the enhanced graphics put there is because the enhanced graphics will sort of make it feel like the way it did when we did try it the first time, right? I remember playing, I remember seeing this huge open space and uh, the PlayStation 1 was not known for open spaces, you know, that the draw distance you normally couldn't see down there in a PS1 game. But I played this Nintendo 64 game and all of a sudden, it's like, wow, I can see this fire, right? This fire, I was already losing my mind. This fire, I remember playing it on the Nintendo 64 at my friend's house, circling this flame and being like, oh my God. Like, oh my goodness, the flames just here before the game had even started looked better than any fire that I had seen on the PlayStation 1 plural, right? Even the textures on the wall seem to pop up, pop out because of the anastropic filtering. Oh, our first enemy. I remember the blood looks sick. Oh my, look at that blood. And see how he, the blood came out and he held his hand there. Oh, look how even the arrow is still in him. Ha. I remember these guys looked really good. Can I switch? Oh, I have multiple guns already. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my goodness. That's actually very... See this blood? See how the blood really, really pops out when you hit it, right? You can imagine that on Nintendo 64, to see a mature game like this and to have the blood pop out the way it did was just... What in the world? What did I just use? Oh, it's like a flare. Okay. Oh, ha! Huh, you have a, f <laughs> you have the um, what do you call it? Lens flare effect, which that was not on the Nintendo 64. Absolutely not. But yeah, let's let's proceed. Let's proceed. I am going to talk the shit out of <laughs> this game because I want you to experience it as I did. So. Even before I started the game, just seeing that huge draw distance, not being surrounded by media blackness, which the uh, PlayStation 1 was famously known for because it couldn't render the distance. Seeing water like this, ignore the distorted ship underneath, seeing water like that looked fantastic. And this fire really was the best fire I had ever seen in the game. Actually, is there anything in the water? I know when I was little, I ignored that. Oh, look at that. Oh, what's this? What's this? Oh, cool. There is stuff under here. Yeah, I absolutely uh, skipped this when I was younger. I wonder what those things are for. See, so already the game sets itself apart with its exploration elements. I'm not just running around shooting everything. I can go in the water. I can dive in. I can pick up hidden items like these, which I'm sure will have a use at some point. Very nice. I like they've added these uh, little enhanced visuals. I think that's quite exciting, to be honest, because it keeps the original feel, but it adds just a little bit of uh, bells and whistles, right? Ah, okay. So see the shine on this item, right? Ah, done. I picked it up. <laughs> but the shine and reflections looked absolutely sick. I remember... I remember that much. When it comes to old retro games, when I do retro reviews, I always remember, right? I always remember how I felt at the time. It's, it's really strange. Huh, is that a barrel? We'll 
you blow up if I shoot you? Oh yeah! Haha, <laughs> secrets! What's, what's this? What is this? Oh, there's a gun up there. Yeah, see these reflect. Oh, okay, there is a crash button. See these reflections? That looked really good. It really popped out, right? Oh. Power cell, okay. Can I shoot you? Huh. Okay, well, that's a gun I'm going to enjoy later. Man, I'm excited. It's like I've been transported back into the 90s and to the Nintendo 64. This is amazing. Yeah, no, I like this. It really feels like Nintendo 64 version with just enough spit shine that, um, you know, just helps modernize it a bit. Can I, like, shoot the wall or anything? Oh, look at that. You can shoot the freaking wall. Oh, that's an attention to detail I did not appreciate when I was younger. That's very good. Oh, more of the collectibles. Nice. Oh, see that animation? Yeah, no, it's all floating back to me. This game was quality. Look at that. Through his freaking head, it stays there. If I shoot another part of his body... Yeah, it sticks. This was really advanced stuff back in the day. really was. Oh, and I can even pick up my arrow. One of them, apparently. All right. Oh yeah, the music pumps you up, you know, really nice, really smooth. Oh my goodness. See, I like this arrow as well, because it doesn't shoot fast, you have to pull. Huh? Oh. Headshots count. Headshots count. Huh. See, it even, like, reacts when you hit it. Another very good attention to detail. Man, I feel giddy. I feel giddy. Ah, oh, there it is. Oh, no. Look how nice that looks, how it's all shiny and all that, right? Everything about the 90s was shiny, and this game was just like, everything looked good. I mean, they tried so hard to make the graphics look nice that even the freaking health items that you picked up had to look good. Oh, here it is. Here it is, my first gun. Ooh. Okay, even leaves the bullet holes. Very, very nice. Uh-uh. Oh, I see that blood, man. Oh, I see the... Oh, oh, I popped his head. Popped his head. Oh, that would have been a big deal back then. It was a big deal. Oh, look. More, more secrets. More secrets. And ammo. Oh. Ha. Oh, man. The time period in video games where if you did any sort of exploration. Oh, it gives you a life. Oh, those are worth collecting then. Oh. See how he held his hand? I want to shoot his head. I don't know what that looks like. Man, it's strong. Oh, I see that dying animation? Man, that's just handcrafted beauty, that is. <laughs> I'm a violent boy. <laughs> ah, that fire. So stood out back in the day. It's, you just can't express it or show it. Just how much this popped, right? Just looked phenomenal. It was like, it looked like pre-rendered fire in-game. Like it was just next level. Oh, did you see that? See how his head popped in all that blood? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh my goodness. Oh, it still holds up. I knew it was as good as I remembered, like just that satisfaction of, you know, remembering something super fanboy style and then experiencing it as an adult and like two freaking decades later at least. And then it turns out it was just as good. Oh, I can grab onto ledge. Oh, any others to kill? Yep. Oh, 
In the freaking throat! In the throat, son! You have to remember as well, during this time, right, this was literally the birth of console first person shooters because apart from like a Doom port <laughs> on the Super Nintendo, uh, you know, the hardware couldn't really do any of this, you know, especially since it was 2D. But these 3D consoles were experimenting with what it means uh, to be a FPS, right? Oh, very nice, very nice. Ooh, shotgun. Shotgun. Oh my goodness, look at this. <laughs> I do remember this shotgun, the texture on the shotgun. Just this view itself. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I'll just keep using this shotgun, no, no worries. I'll get close for you. Don't you worry. <laughs> yeah, you fall off. See, what's funny as well is because, you know, still so fresh off Doom and this and that, uh, there was no reload animation. You didn't reload. Oh, I can switch between ammunition though. Just learnt that. That's cool. Oh, see how I popped his head after? Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, God, you know that's sick. You know that's sick. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Oh, yeah. Do it in the head and uh, make it count. I like how if you kill them while they're running to, up to you, it transitions into a roll animation. Very smart, very well thought out. Oh, he did a kamikaze sort of thing. <laughs> the explosion of blood is insane. Oh, I switched. Ah, I see what's what's happened here. I switched ammunition to like the exploding one. That's why everyone's gone flying. Look at that though, like head. Um, I think that's a spine. No, oh, get away. <laughs> see how that sends them flying. Beautiful. Notice also as I run does this little bit of a tilt thing. Stops it from being a uh, flat experience. Oh yes! Hey! Hello! Thank you, Tara. That's okay. That's okay, sweetheart. I'm, I'm happy to save you. I'm happy to save you. The younger me probably shot you when I saw you, so I apologize <laughs> for that. But the older me cares. The older me cares. Yeah, that water looks great. This really feels like a luxurious 1990s game. Big, big spaces, you know, you know, greeted by that wall of uh, black. I do remember though that the original Turok 2 did have fog in the distance, so it wasn't like this. I do apologize, there was fog in the distance, but the scope and everything and the texture and the blood and so forth looked a lot, a lot better than what you can get on the PlayStation. And I don't want anyone watching this to think I have a gripe with the PlayStation. The majority of my retro reviews are actually PlayStation 1 games. I think it is a fantastic, outright, you know, amazing system. But the whole time I was playing it for the majority of my youth, let's call it, um, I thought the PlayStation had the better graphics because it had the more mature games. It had like the Resident Evils and this and that. And when you looked at the Nintendo 64, it was Zelda and Mario. So you thought, right, the system, the console is incapable of good graphics. That was just what you assumed. And then you played a game like Turok with this blood and this fire and this water and these textures and the anastropic filtering, which is an effect that the PlayStation 1 did not have. It was exclusive to the Nintendo 64. 
having all of that running in front of you really uh, really surprised me you know we didn't know we didn't have the internet to quickly Google which is the stronger console how how console wars worked back then and it, it was a lot more fun to be honest how it worked back then was uh, just sc endless screenshot comparisons right endless screenshot comparisons it's just the fight went on and on and on every single time a brand new game came out it was further evidence that your console of choice uh, is a superior one right and when Turok 2 came out Turok 1 was a big deal as well but especially when Turok 2 came out it was like it was a shock so it was, oh my goodness the Nintendo the Nintendo 64 is capable of such good graphics you were like surprised you were pleased you felt betrayed you felt many different many different emotions right and it certainly was that console exclusive because make no mistake Nintendo 64 owners copped it during that era right because literally for every like one good game we got on that system the playstation had like 10 the amount of games that made it to the playstation compared to 64 let me just put it to you this way it was an event right it was an event um every time a good nintendo 64 game came out and don't get me wrong nintendo 64 by the end of its lifespan had heaps of really good games right oh look at you you look like an even fancier bow than what i got Tech bow. Sniper capability enabled. oh sniper hey oh wow <laughs> oh that explosion Wow, you could really zoom in. Could really zoom in. And the after explosion as well. Alright, I'm gonna mess you up, buddy. <laughs> oh, that was sick. That was actually sick. This is a very good weapon. Yep, let's make your head explode. Oh, oh no. <laughs> nice so not only can you zoom in with this but it does the explosion all right very sexy very sexy indeed so shiny and pretty they really need to bring back to rock in this original design not the later failed attempts they did like this sort of turok with exotic weapons that's what needs to come back oh my goodness Oh, shot his arm off and the other guy's head oh, there's just so much going on at once there is so much going on shotgun. Ha, no wonder why they give you the shotgun it's like you're gonna need it <laughs> oh my goodness no oh, I blasted his whole front bit oh you can see his spine Oh, ultimate bragging rights. Oh, nah, get out of here. I got my special bullets. <laughs> oh. But yeah, imagine a Turok 2 remake. And I don't mean like this. I mean like hardcore Resident Evil 2 sort of remake. That'd be sick. But more than anything, I would like to just see the series makes a return. They've, they've stuffed up certain sequels. It didn't work out. You know, this is arguably the favorite Turok in the whole series. And uh, Turok 3 is apparently pretty good, but I never got to play that, sadly. Man, to relive the time when this was like peak. Peak graphics, right? Like you would have been showing your friends this in Nintendo 64 and they wouldn't have believed it. Which is true, that's exactly what happened with my friend and me. He showed it to me, you know. I had the PlayStation, he had the Nintendo 64, he was telling me the Nintendo 64 could do better graphics, I thought he was full of it, I really did, I'm like, that's that's not even possible, that's not even possible, I'm like, no, no, I've seen the mature bloody games on the PlayStation, right, there's no way Nintendo 64 could bring out even one good game, let alone a series, and nope, I was wrong.
let's say yes. Here we go. <laughs> nice. Yeah, gonna, gonna say it. Gonna say it. This game is freaking as good as I remember. And there's so many other better weapons that do more morbid <laughs> things uh, t to the characters and so forth. So, oh my goodness. <sighs> to be able to just go back and share that passion, that excitement. Ah, means a lot to me. It means a lot to me. I'm a very humble gamer. I love reliving, you know, excitement from the golden days, you know? All right, I think I'm probably going to wrap things up here. I'm obviously loving my time with this game. It totally, totally holds up. All those good memories from my youth have just come flooding back. I love the enemy design. The blood is as good as I remember the weapons just as good the explorative elements as well that i remembered fondly i remembered the fact that you know you it wasn't just closed corridors and shooting what you saw it's you know the up the down like it's just so much right so much anyways you've been watching gaming my whole life thank you so much for hanging out with me you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you all live on this big blue planet of ours. God bless you all. Take care. Let me know. Did you play this game back in the day? Are you seeing it now for the first time? And you're like, you know what? This does actually look pretty good for a PS1 era game. Are you unimpressed? Which, look, I wouldn't judge you if you're unimpressed. It is definitely one of those things which you had to experience, right? you had to experience i think the only way you could compare it is like you know back in the day when crisis came out and you saw that on max settings you couldn't quite describe what was going on but you knew everything that you were seeing looked and felt visually a lot better than you had ever seen before that's exactly what this game did but on the nintendo 64 of all places and uh yeah all right talk to you all next time Bye-bye.